Okay. The music has stopped. The time has come. Thank you all for coming today. Uh, I know it's the fourth day and people are probably thinking about going home. So many of you have, but it's good to see you all here. So thank you for coming to this talk. Uh, today's presentation is going to be on moniker managed DNS for OpenStack. My name is Patrick Galbraith. I'm from HP Cloud Services, and uh, I'm with the DNS as a service team. HP Cloud DNS is the official name. And I'm here to give this talk about Moniker. So a uh, little bit about myself. Uh, I have been working with open source since about 1993. I was at, at andover.net.org for a number of years and worked in a number of companies like uh, Lycos and Classmates. MySQL for three years, and now I'm with HP, and uh, I always like open, open source projects and have uh, been working with OpenStack now that I've been at HP. Um, the first question we want to ask ourselves is, it seems like a simple question. Why would I ask this question? What is DNS? Well, just by asking the question, you realize it's a bit of a rhetorical question, but how important DNS is and how fundamental DNS is to everything we do in our daily course of work and how the, the entire internet, everything works. It's the internet telephone book. You want to get to a particular site, the, the lookup gives you an IP address and your browser does the, the appropriate thing or whatever service you're using or whatever method of connecting, SSHing, it knows how to get there. And likewise, if you're doing reverse lookups. Um, I come from, a, as I mentioned, I work at MySQL, and I've, my background is databases, and I like databases. I find them really interesting to work on, and when approached with this project, I thought, well, this is a natural fit. I, it, it's a hugely distributed database that makes it possible for us to do what we need to do every day. It's also asynchronous. You make a change, and uh, whatever TTL value is set, that change is made. It's not going to happen right away. You know the rest, and I don't have to uh, spend too much time explaining that, but I wanted to underscore the importance of DNS. So the next question is, is what is DNS as a service? Or more specifically, what is managed DNS? Well, it's, if you can think of it as it's commoditizing managed DNS services. Normally in, in you know, traditionally, you would manage your own DNS server and have to update manually update your bind files and administer that DNS server. Well, manage DNS means all that joy is taken away from you, and it's more of a service that you use, and you don't have to worry about the specifics. You don't have to worry about what it is, the underlying DNS server. How does it work? I make a change. It's possible for people to do lookups, and that change be reflected in those lookups. Uh, providing... Uh, you know, DNS as a service would provide a RESTful API for management of DNS records and zones. You make your changes through that RESTful API, whether you're using some sort of web client, REST client, or doing it programmatically through some kind of bindings through that REST API. Uh, and of course, this provides reduced complexity for end users of this service. It's easy for them to maintain their records. Anybody should be able to use it. So where and why would I use DNS as a service? Well, of course, we want DNS services for our instances. But we really want DNS services for everything. Uh, anything you're going to use, you're going to want some sort of DNS for that. And that's what this service would provide for you. Um, it also allows you to control your own DNS. <laughs> you're responsible for your DNS and you're not tied down to the specific details of how to maintain your DNS. You can focus on just that task and that's what the service provides for you. Also, it, I came from not only a database background, but I originally started out in the Perl world and I like to script things, try to make things, do as many things as possible and automate them. Now I've gone into Python and Ruby, scriptable updates and modifications to your DNS records and that's what this allows you to do. So uh, about this talk, uh, what is Moniker? Moniker is the thing we're talking about here. 
It's an OpenStack-inspired DNS-as-a-service project. And by OpenStack-inspired, we mean we adhere to the conventions of OpenStack. We've des designed Moniker to, from ground up to work, speak, talk, and do everything like uh, in a, any other OpenStack project would do. And also with in mind, how would we integrate into OpenStack? Um, provides a DNS services from the entry point of creating, update, maintaining, and deleting DNS records using the moniker API. Um, it also, of course, depending on, you don't worry about these details, but it provides resolu DNS resolution for your end users. Um, importantly, uh, with the design of moniker, everything's very modular. Everything we've, we've done, we've done in a way where just about everything can be configured, primarily um, database backend or the DNS server you're using. Uh, we've also developed it with in mind to be integrated with other OpenStack components. And it's also an ideal project to use for building a DNS as a service, if that's something you like to do, or even if you want to run your own DNS server. For us at HP, we've developed our DNS service using Moniker. That's the core of that. Why Moniker? You need DNS. Everybody needs DNS. Um, DNS services and API out of, out of the box. It's a very easy service to set up. Um, it, if you, depending on your needs, uh, you just, uh, Follow the installation, and you, you know, presto, you have a DNS server to utilize, whether it be for whatever you're running in your cloud or outside of the cloud, even. Um, also, through the goodness of being an open, OpenStack-inspired project, you, it utilizes Keystone for authentication. So whatever all your authentication is for your other services, you obviously have that for, for Moniker and can utilize that. Um, also, we've designed it in mind with basic interoperability with Nova and Quantum, and more to come in that regard. Command line interface and Python bindings. Command line interface for those of you who don't, who like a nice standard CLI that works like any other OpenStack CLI. And then, of course, programmat programmatically, uh, you uh, can utilize the, uh, the uh, RESTful API. About the architecture, um, this provides an overview of what the architecture is for, for Moniker. Um, we'll start with the entry point with REST API calls to Moniker API. That is then goes to RabbitMQ, which is then picked up by Moniker Central, which is the only component within Moniker that talks to the Moniker database. So any changes that happen through the Moniker API are picked up, acted upon in Moniker Central. Moniker DB. And then, depending on whatever type of DNS back, backend you're using, whether it be Power DNS or a file based DNS system such as Bind, for instance, if you're using something like Power DNS, it's a DNS back, DNA, database back DNS server. So you make your changes through the, the database in one place, and so that's where Moniker Central makes that change. If you're using a file based system such as Bind, on each of those bind servers, you're going to be running the Moniker agent, which receives its messages also from RabbitMQ from Moniker Central, and makes those changes to the files for bind, as well as reloading bind using something like RNDC whenever a change is made. There's also MySQL bind is another backend that we support, and similar setup there. You make a change to the database as well as update some of the zone files. The overview for Moniker. Moniker API, it's, of course, as I've said, it's the API front end based on Oslo WSGI as well as Flask. Moniker Central, that's the core business logic. And as, yeah, it's the only piece that talks to the database. Moniker Agent, this is optional depending on whether you, as, as I said, you run a file based or a database back ended uh, a DNS server. It's used to fan out the state changes to each of the DNS servers, so if, whether it updates the, the bind zone file or 
whatever it has to do. It does that on each of the, each of the uh, DNS servers. Moniker sync, this is an optional entry point. And I forgot to mention this back on this slide. Um, this is where notifications would be received from, from either Nova or Quantum, and those changes would be acted upon through Moniker. So think about it this way. If you, for instance, you launched some instance and had a DNS entry for it, when you relinquish that instance and delete it, you, of course, don't want a DNS record pointing to it. So in order to do that functionality, events from, from Nova would have to be consumed in order to make that change happen. Uh, also, uh, pluggable storage. We have an interface to the databases. Um, right now, we, we, all, we have relational databases through SQL Alchemy, but it's for any backend. Um, and out of those relational databases with SQL Alchemy, we've, we've been working with SQLite, MySQL, but really any database that, if, that SQL Alchemy worked with. Um, pluggable backends. Um, interface to other DNS servers, uh, not just bind and power DNS. The idea is that you would develop your own interface depending on what kind of DNS server you're running. Moniker has the architecture for you to be able to do that. Um, there's also uh, existing implement, as I mentioned, there are existing implementations for power DNS, bind nine and MySQL bind. Future developments. Um, of course, pull requests are greatly accepted. Um, tighter integration with uh, Nova and Quantum, as in the uh, processing the events from those and, and making whatever appropriate changes to uh, moniker for those. DNSSEC, um, DevStack integration, Horizon integration, and uh, we want to apply for OpenStack incubation, something we're going to be doing very soon. So I'll say thank you for listening to the presentation. Um, the, the, the good part now comes with questions. And of course, uh, for questions, I leave these links up for you to be able to uh, find all the resources for our project, IRC channel, um, where the code is, and is, of course, the docs. So I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. I think so? Yes, yes, yes. Let's talk after this. Very good. <laughs> I like that question. I hope your question is as good. Uh, probably not. Uh, and for all I know, uh, it won't even make sense. Um, I don't know DNS all that well. OK, so what would need to change, uh, if anything at all, or, or is it even possible to do support geolocation uh, with this API? Um, well. That would be more, you know, the core of Moniker doesn't necessarily handle that particular aspect. That would be more of what your DNS provider has built into their services. Would you need to expose anything different in the API? OK, cool. Nice. Uh, great work. Same, awesome. same thing with something like Round Robin as well. OK, yeah. If, okay. you had a, if that was also your question. I know it's not. I'm saying that you know, it's a similar type right. requirement. OK. Uh, integration with Quantum and Nova, is there code changes needed on the Nova side, or is it just in the Moniker side? Um, the changes would be, we, you know, we would have to flesh out functionality for um, consuming those messages. But I don't think there's really much on that side that has to, to happen, as far as I know. Yeah, and it's it's standard. You know, we like I said, everything's built with uh, adhering to OpenStack standards, and so you know, it's uh, you know well built for for dealing with that. What's that? Oslo RPC code. Yeah.
We'd also uh, consume changes from the Nova DNS bindings as well. Those are only A records, but the idea is to be able to act upon those as well. Are they going to be detected with Nova bindings? Yes. They're not required anymore, right? I don't know. Ryan was. <laughs> All right, well, this isn't this morning's Nova and Quantum joint session where we talked about what was left and no one spoke up. So uh, if you guys want to do that, uh, go speak up to. Yeah, it is. <laughs> So good. It sounds like that's good. Good thing I mentioned that. Yes. Mm -hmm. We do re support those, yes. We will update that. Yes. What is the advantage in Mongo? Like, you have an agent running on every DNS server in your queue right now. Like, if if file based. Um, like, bind can do zone transfer between the agent everywhere as opposed to just having the agent. You could do that. There's there's nothing preventing you from doing that, but it, it's. Write your own plugin? What? Write your own plugin? Yeah. No. no, but for example, to support the dynamic DNS, if you want it to be completely... Uh, you would have to write a new plugin. Yeah. Just like Power DNS, we, you know, the Power DNS implementations we've worked with, we use MySQL replication to do that, but you could use master slave replication of DNS to do that as well. It's, it, that's the nice thing about DNS is it's pretty, uh, the sky's the limit on what you can do as far as how you have it implemented. Yes? I think Moniker could fill, fill that role. If it has to do with DNS, it would definitely fulfill that role, depending on whether they used it for that purpose. You know, it, Moniker's whole purpose in life is DNS. How, however you utilize D, DNS within your organization or slash architecture, then the, you know, it's up to you. I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah. We would like it to be used for that, yes. Um, yes, absolutely, yeah.
Yes. Well, we, we're, we're private beta right now, but we'll be going public beta, and then we'll be going into uh, general availability sometime this summer. And um, yeah, it's very usable. I, yes? Yes. Yeah, we, we have an importer exporter for bind nine. Um, that's you know that's something that can be developed as well. It's uh, ultimately how you utilize the API and however you choose to parse records. We have one for bind, but it could be done for anything, depending on the record format. It's it's a it's part of it's a, a tool that utilizes the API. <laughs> yeah, we're we're working out the performance issues of that. But as far as as far as the API, it's not part of the API. It just utilizes it. I mean, you, you could do it a number of ways. You could go through the API and or you could go straight into the database. You know, if you're using a database back-ended DNS server. Yeah. Yeah, but the, a better implementation would be the API itself cannot parse all the, the exact. Yeah, right, right. It has to pass that to the, the plugin. Go. Any other questions? Horizon support. Horizon support. Yes, that's on our roadmap. It's something we want. Um, it's kind of a funny question. We're talking to them, but not in the type of talk you're thinking of. <laughs> More tech, uh, tech, uh, technical issues where. Work. We, we, we partner with, for HP Cloud DNS, we partner with Akamai. And um, we uh, have some internal systems that utilize Ultra DNS as well. But um, not quite yet, but I'm sure we will be. Well, Moniker provides you a means to set that. It doesn't do anything in particular with regard to that. So it's really ultimately how you have your DNS architected, whether you were using Moniker or whether you were using just a straight DNS server and managing it traditional way. And that, I, I, I don't know. It, it really depends on your, your, um, archi your architecture and your needs for DNS. Uh, yeah, it's a global. <laughs> Any other questions? Discussion, arguments, thoughts? Thank you very much for, for coming. I know it's late, and I hope you guys have a great trip home.